having something that is practically my two cameras, the D6 and the D850 in one, is going to be something that's quite game changing, I think, for my, my own work process. Speed, high ISO, image quality of all in one camera. I mean, man, what do you want more? La rapidité, l'autofocus, le silence, pas de miroir qui vient obstruer la vision, c'est génial. The fact that the Z9 has 10 bit inside the camera means the capabilities of what I can do with skin color and complexion are so vast. If you had asked me two years ago what my fantasy would have been, I would have laughed and been like, oh yeah, you know, it would have been something like 45 megapixels, 20 frames per second, super fast autofocus. You know, and then all of a sudden it's, it's right here and you realize that it really is just as good as you imagined, which is kind of rare. Hello everybody, welcome to the Nikon Europe Z9 q and I'm joined by Amy Shaw automotive photography, and I'm joined by Christian, who's a fashion photographer. We're going to be taking some of your questions, but before we start talking about some of your questions, please do get asking them. Before we go into those questions, we're going to have a bit of an introduction from you guys, talking about what you've been doing with the Z9, talking about how you've been using it over the past couple of days. Obviously, there's been so much excitement already today with the launch of the Z9. I can see there's so many comments online and there's so many videos out there already, but I really want to get into what you guys have been doing with the Z9 and what your thoughts are on it. So, Amy, I'll start with you. I was obviously there when you were shooting Z9 stuff, so I kind of get an idea of what you shoot, and I know what you do, but I'd love mm -hmm. everybody else to get a good idea of what you shoot and what you do. So, just talk to us about what your style of photography is, and then also talk Talk to us about you know, what your first impressions were with that Z9. Of course. Well, I mean, you got to see my very first experience <laughs> with, with the camera. It was one of those where I was like, oh my God, it's actually there. It's actually here. And I mean, for me, so I shoot, uh, for people that don't know, just automotive, so cars and, and the, uh, the motorbikes. And you know, these are often fast moving subjects, but when I'm also shooting people as well, it's, um, it, it's difficult sometimes to try and swap between the two subjects. So for me, being able to, to, try, to try this is, was just a complete new experience. So that was really exciting for me to, to, to first try. Absolutely. <laughs> and Christian, I'm going to ask the same question to you, but obviously, you know, I've never worked with you before. I know you shoot fashion. I've seen all your work and I've seen the amazing stuff that you do, but just give me a bit of insight into, you know, your photography as a whole and then also what your first impressions were with Z9. Yeah, hi. Great, great being here, first of all. And uh, yeah, it's the same what you said already. Um, but let's start. Yes, what I'm doing is fashion photography, so I'm working mostly with models, with dresses, with scenarios, uh, but all in this kind of world of fashion. It can be boys, girls, uh, but we love to make, to create a scenario. It's not like just a girl on the wall. It's more like a big dress, and then yeah, it's a bit of a theater thing. And when you guys came with this new Nikon and you gave me my hand, it was a bit like I was not prepared for having this kind of Kalashnikov in my hand. <laughs> and it, it was near that fog, like... Fa damn it, that's too fast for me. It's like too good for me. It's like, you know, when you're, you're, you're used to drive as a normal good car and you get suddenly a Formula One racing car, I'm like, okay, go for that now. No introduction, just do it. And I pressed the button. It was like, drum, 20 <laughs> pictures by, by the second. And they, and they told me, oh, it was just a little bit. So, no, it was absolutely unexpected to yep. get this kind of high-end tool where you have to feel in whatever you want to do, the camera can do it. The yes. question is, are you good enough with that camera? <laughs> <laughs> that's always one of the biggest problems, right? <laughs> yes. um, I think that's one of the great things about where the Z9 sits, because Nikon have never had a camera that can give you so much speed, mm -hmm. but then still high resolution megapixels as well, right? And even, Amy, when we were met at Lotus, we were talking about how you know, normally you shoot one single frame, mm -hmm. and you know, that's the way that you've generally been shooting like D850s and previous DSLRs. Yep. Has that changed since you were using Z9? <laughs> um, I would say it, it does purely because I've suddenly got this ability to be able to capture the, the moment a, a lot easier, I guess. It makes yeah. my job a lot easier. So not just when it comes down to the, you know, the, when I'm doing car to car tracking, especially that is when I need the speed because the amount of, especially on, on British roads, when it's not the smoothest when you're trying to do car to car tracking. The idea is that yourself in, in the tracking car and the, in the vehicle that you're photographing, 
are as smooth with each other and often that that's not always the case unless you're on something like a track like we were mm -hmm. so to be able to have a camera that can shoot the speed that i can and also for me i mean the ability to be able to see my image easier with you know with the with the rear screen that yep. can i can flip multiple ways that <laughs> makes my job again much much easier so in terms of the speed of taking photographs that definitely helps but not only when it comes to the tracking and the panning you know the the dynamic stuff also when it comes down to photographing people you know i will sometimes have this the 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 speed of which I have to pick my camera up to my eye to be able to catch that moment and I need to make sure that it is quick from, from the point of if it's stationary or even switched off for me to be able to switch it on and get it there. It's, mm -hmm. That for me is really, really important to capture those moments. I mean, we saw you in the launch video, literally your head's out of a window, right? And you're, <laughs> yeah. you're there with your screen flipped out. And I'd imagine that, well, that for you is like your day job, right? But Yeah, I mean, I have to have a hairbrush <laughs> with me all the time because, uh, yeah, I mean, you also probably have to have a hairbrush with you to be able to sort your model's hairs out. But you Usually it's trying to sort mine out when I've got my head out the, the window of a car. So, uh, yeah. In, in the end of the day, honestly, somebody gives me the camera in my hand and I press the button and all the rest already done by somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the end, it's really unfair in, my, in, my, in, my, in, my, in our fashion world. The photographer gets so much credit, but in the end, the photographer is just doing that. <laughs> Click, and 15 people have worked on the model and they really transport in front of a camera and you just have to like, click. But the thing with the click is, it is not that you need this back to reality now, <laughs> that <laughs> you need in that moment all the features such a camera is offering you. It is more about that whatever you're doing, it's always the power in your background. Mm -hmm. And when you speed up, because of any reason, the camera can do it with you. It is a bit like in your world, the cars, you don't drive with a car always full power, but when you're, like, I don't know, in a normal Rue Nationale and you want to overtake a lorry, mm -hmm. in that moment you want to have the power and you feel the power. And it's the same with me normally, I can make maybe just shot by shot, but then you have something, for example, where the girl makes a special move and in the earlier time we made one shot, one shot, and then again and again, and now, especially when you're working with LED lighting, so you're not flashing, so you mm -hmm. can't use the full speed, you can make just one movement and then you have the choice and you take the one shot. Mm -hmm. And you have it not just like on, the, uh, on, your, on your cell phone where you have this kind of function, but with this chip, I don't know how big is it, like a little <laughs> flight chip. <laughs> and now you have it in that quality. And, and, and that is in the end all about that, that you have whatever you need. If you just ask for it, you get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't need it all the time, but you want to know that it is there. And in the professional world, there's always suddenly something happening why you need it in that moment it is there and you're never missing it i think it's something you mentioned earlier that you don't realize what you're missing until you're shown what it is and then <laughs> i think that was the, the difference between the shoot that, that we did uh, yeah. with z9 to uh, you know to today there have been times where i thought oh, i could really have done with, with, <laughs> with the z9 in this moment and that's happened on more than one occasion but again it's something that i didn't realize that i wanted until I tried it and then didn't have it for a while. <laughs> so it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, our, our shoot was quite a while ago mm, now, and yep. you've been in a situation where you've obviously been on, on other jobs and using other cameras, and you were like, I can't, where's my Z9 <laughs> yeah. gone? And this, uh, is, this is kind of create, you guys creating desires. And yeah. it, when, when the camera came, I was not looking for, for example, 20 frames per second. No. I was not looking for mm -hmm. that. But it's Murphy's Law. But the shooting, the next shooting, the Nikon was already back in your safe. <laughs> and I had to shoot high speed hair campaign and, and catching this one moment. And I was calling at, at, your, at your office, like, can I have to set nine? <laughs> said, no, it's not out yet. You don't know that camera and you're not talking on the phone about the set nine. <laughs> so, it, yeah, you create also desires. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, with the set seven, it was already starting, but something new came in my life. And, and, and it is always like the, the new things are coming. Often you don't even think that it could happen. And, and I don't know even if there's anything more than that even possible in the world. I mean, <laughs> what is already in there? I think, as, as, I think one of the things to keep in mind is that you know, the, the more specification you have in a camera like this, because mm -hmm. you know, on paper, it's so powerful. It does all these things but not every photographer needs to use all these things like we've talked about. But yet there are things that you might not realize that just makes your everyday job easier and you can forget about them and rely on the camera to do that, right? So yeah. I think that's where a lot of photographers might not realize that the, these things exist until they've used them as well. Yeah. So um, a couple of questions that we've got coming in already. So one of the questions was regarding the viewfinder experience. So mm -hmm. quite clearly, this is always one of the biggest things that people debate when it comes to mirrorless cameras and DSLRs and mm -hmm. electronic viewfinders. So Amy, I know that you've obviously shot D850 and D6 for mm -hmm. a number of years. 
did you find that when you were shooting Z9 that there was any difference going to an electronic viewfinder or was it just that it was basically the same, it just looked the same? So, completely honestly, yeah. if for me, it was completely the same but also completely different as in like it was the same as in you know sometimes in you can you can get uh, mirrorless cameras that might black out a little bit and then for me that I struggled yeah. being able to use that so I loved having the you know being able to shoot with my with my the D850 and the D6 because I didn't have to lose that and so being able to use the, the Z9 and it hasn't got any issues such as that yet I'm looking at this crystal clear image of exactly what I know I'm going to be shooting and thinking oh this camera can keep up with what I need visually not and you know and then there's me trying to keep up with with it and its its technology so from from that point of view it was fantastic because I know that especially using my glasses as well I thought mm -hmm. am I going to have a have a, tr uh, a problem trying to just look at the screen and focus on the screen and no it was as if it was just my I don't know an, a, a second eye it was it was so so crystal clear for me to be able to see. And Christian, kind of the same question to you about the viewfinder, really. Do you, did you think that um, because there's so much information in front of you, it kind of makes your, your life a little bit easier? Or is it that you prefer kind of an optical viewfinder? Or what was your thoughts about it? So about this question about the viewfinder, let's, let's be honest. When I had first time in life the, the Z7 in my hand, that was the first really viewfinder camera, I was really like thinking, what the fuck is that? Throw <laughs> that thing in the bin, I want to have my 850 back with a real good finder. That is like typical, you know, because you have the things you use yeah. and then the new thing is coming and first you say no. Uh, but there have been many reasons why I said let's try the camera. Funny wise, uh, the first reason was the whole system was very light and I, I put it in my, in my flight case and my major problem is to get my flight case in the carry-on. And this had, there's a whole Nikon system, so this new lenses, everything was so light and, and suddenly it was half of the weight of the 850. So I said, try it. So after now, so long working with the viewfinder, especially with this one here now, it completely changed. That means in the beginning, as I was like, no, like everybody's saying, give me what I'm used for the next 100, <laughs> 500 years. It was, first of all, the autofocus, the way how you can work with these new cameras, that the autofocus is like following the girl, especially mm -hmm. with that camera. You have your perfect framing and mm -hmm. the focus is just doing that. Mm -hmm. With the 850, it was the opposite way. You have had your certain focus point. You have always did that. Yeah, this, this here. Every photographer is doing that. I'm thinking, is it crazy? Does he have a little tick here? But that was because of catching the focus point, then going back, shooting, mm -hmm. catching the focus point. No, no. That's completely out. I don't yeah. do that anymore. I have my camera super relaxed, exactly perfect framing. Mm -hmm. And whatever the girl is doing, the other focus is like completely normal on that. And I don't have to care anymore for mm -hmm. that. But that is thanks to this uh, electronic viewfinder because that was never work uh, together with this kind of autofocus with a classical optical viewfinder. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing where I really see the difference. Then something very little, I mean, you know how it is, you shoot in the studio, a little light changing and then running with a light meter. Okay, now in our times, no assistance, no anymore. What is a light meter? <laughs> what is a light meter? A light meter, you measure light. Ah, <laughs> uh, look here, clock. <laughs> okay, but even that I don't have to do anymore because they always think I'm a genius because I always know exactly what is the right lighting. No, because I've seen the viewfinder. Yes. The viewfinder gets darker and lighter. In the beginning, I thought that's an amateur gimmick. <laughs> but then I realized, no, it's very practical. Yeah. So in reality, now I'm completely in a professional job and I have this lighting here and I use it as an available lighting, which I'm never flashing. No. I don't like flashing. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. I can exactly see it's right, and then they maybe light and say, No, it's fine. Are you sure? But no, 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 it's good. <laughs> How does he know? He's a genius. It's magic. And I said, I have it in my ass, you know, I feel it. No, I have it in my view for now. So there are many things. The information, honestly, I don't care about information because. My camera is a manual. Mm -hmm. I have no clue. Even I don't know how to put a camera on program automatic or something <laughs> like that. No idea. The only things we are using is uh, that I have my own um, modus uh, yep. that I can change the user quickly mm -hmm. for different lighting situations. But we make every manual. Everything. Mm -hmm. yep. So that is the only thing that I'm really like still working like I would have the F3 in my hand uh, or the F2. But uh, all the rest, opposite. <laughs> but... Um, uh, yes, I have had the 850 short time ago in my hand, and it's not really working anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. So one question I was going to ask you as well um, that we got through was about skin tones and color. Mm. So Christian, I know that you really like the idea of having a raw file that is a true raw file that like, gives you as much data as possible, yeah. right? Um, do you think that the Z9 is you know equal to other Nikon cameras when it comes to color performance and raw data? I, and I must say, I, I, first of all, about raw data, and, and I have to make Nikon a big compliment. I, I, 
when the 850 the 800 came out that was my big gap i went away from phase one and all that big massive heavy cameras that was for me like a, 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 a gift from hell from <laughs> not from hell from heaven because i got suddenly this fast tool and then the 850 and now this even better and better and what is always never changed from the eight, uh, from the 800 over the 850 z7 and now the z9 is this amazing quality of the chip especially in combination with skin tone and and all this beauty fashion world where that is so much important for us mm -hmm. because we always look at all these things here how is the skin coming i mean i switch off everything so uh, sharpening is all off every uh, color correction is all off every lens correction everything is off 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 so it's coming the absolutely pure data comes into capture and in capture we are ag again off 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 mm -hmm. but like that the data are looking beautiful alive we don't have this digital plastic uh, thing and uh it's it's, it's and the cool thing is it's fast, like a classical sport camera, but which I would never use because mm -hmm. the chip is too small and the data are too small, but you have this quality. I'm just reading a couple of questions that were coming <laughs> in as well. Um, we had a question about general ISO performance. Now, Amy, I'm trying to think. We didn't really shoot anything that was massively let out on, out on the track, but we did definitely mm -hmm. do some shoots at night, right? That's yes. As the, after the sun set. So um, from the shots that you've edited, yep. Did you feel like there was anything that was noticeable when it came to ISO performance, or were you really happy with what you were seeing in front of you? Well, this is the thing. Like, even when looking at the images afterwards, looking, clo I really tried to look. I was like, <laughs> can I see any noise in that? Because I don't usually shoot too silly of an ISO. Probably no, no higher than 1600, maybe 2000 tops, but that depends on when light is really, really low. But as you know from the shoot, the, the shoot that we did with, with Lotus, a couple of the, the darker evening shots, I was trying to capture a couple of the, the people, the portraits. And a couple of things with that is, um, you know, trying to use the, the focus, the, the, the eye focus, the, the ability to, to know that, that, that my subject's eye is in focus. I was fascinated reviewing the images, being like, oh, wow, that really, that's <laughs> crystal. And then also noticing, or, you know, very, very little. Of, uh, nothing that I would have thought, oh, that's, I can notice that grainy, noisy, or anything mm. like that. It was, you can see, because sometimes, especially low light on something that's so tiny detail, such as the reflection on somebody's eye, mm. you can usually notice if the quality is poor. And just instead, I was thinking, wow, I can even see the, the color of his eye <laughs> or something. It was, it was, that was pretty impressive, actually. So, like this shot here, yes. we, th this isn't lit with any artificial lights or anything like that. This no. is just the lights that were literally around literally. us. I think the most light on, on his face there is like there were some parking bollard lights. And yes. it was literally one of those. So he wasn't, it wasn't shot at like, I don't know, a, a second or anything like that. No. It was a purely moment of a, I think I shot it at like maybe one eightieth, something like yep. that. And so not, not silly slow. And um, yeah, no, it was, it was absolutely crystal. And I was really, really impressed. And, you know, for, for me, I, you know, like you did, Christian, I, I don't shoot with any artificial light as all right. whatever light is, is going ahead. So the quality of, of the image in such low light with high ISO is something that's really, really important for me because of the way that I shoot and the subject matters that I'm, that I'm shooting with in that low light. So that was very, very impressive. And I think one of the really cool stories about this picture, mm -hmm. and this is one of the great things about your photography as well, is that this isn't a model. No. <laughs> this is the guy who owns the car. Yes. You know, and so you know, you're capturing people mm -hmm. with their vehicles as well, right? Yes. And, and I think that's what really kind of makes some of your pictures look really great. So yeah, thank you. this is not only a good example of you know higher ISO, but also a good example of the camera can focus in low light situations as well. Yeah, precisely. And for the ability, for, especially for, for for people that shoot like myself, where we're focusing not just on um, on one subject matter such as cars, but having a diverse subject range such as people or whatever you, nature, it's the ability that the camera can also understand what the difference is as well. And yeah. so, for example, for me, over the, the last weekend, I've, I've just done a shoot, a, a road trip, and one of the, the shots I would have loved to have had the Z94 <laughs> was I was on this this high alpine pass and I wanted to um, not alpine portuguese I wanted to, I wanted to to capture the car as it went all the way around this this long swoop again I wanted to be able to look through the the, the viewfinder like yeah. you were saying yeah. and having your your models kind of moving around that car was moving you know in my foreground and then further into yeah. the back of the frame and I wanted to be able to focus it without having to keep refocusing all the way around or having to have such a high f-stop yeah. to be able to focus the whole yeah. way around i wanted to have a fairly low f-stop and be able to have 
that focus all the yeah. way around. And so knowing now that I can do those those shoots with the Z9 and be able to capture that, I'm really excited to, to do. So, yeah. The, there is a question that's actually come in for me, uh, which is about astrophotography. So there was a question about astrophotography, which was how does the sensitivity compare to a Z7 II? Um, if you're talking about um, ISO sensitivity, then it's a better ISO performance than what you get from a Z7 II, but the ISO range is the same. So it's still from ISO 64 to 25,000, but it does have what's called a starlight view. So one of the things that the Z7 can't do is it can't boost its exposure to kind of allow you to see the night sky, mm -hmm. but the Z9 can. Um, it's one of those features that's really hidden in there, but it has this really cool starlight view that um, you might want to do a little bit more research on, but it sounds like it's going to be amazing like that. So there are some really cool hidden features in this camera that you know, some people just won't really find until they, they, until they need to use them for specific situations. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a question about speed of using the camera. Now, I don't think you guys have had enough time with Z9s. Um, well, no one's ever had enough time with a Z9, <laughs> but I don't think you've had enough time to kind of customize your cameras and things like that. But one, one of the questions I will ask you is, did you feel like this camera was still a Nikon camera? Did you feel like you knew your way around it, if that makes sense? And I'll hand that over to you first. Yeah, from the minute that you, you pick it up, for me, it felt like something I was already using. It made complete sense to, to be able to hold in the, the interface and the feel of it. There's a couple of points where I thought, oh, this, this feels different, but not in a, in a bad way at all. Like the, the ability to be able to shoot, you know, both portrait and, and landscape for me was, was super, super helpful. And again, when it comes to the, the rear screen, being able to, to move that, it, it, it felt like the Nikon that I was used to, but like on a higher level, <laughs> which I was, yeah, super excited to use. But I mean, what did you think? It was standing, first of all, very big Nikon on the camera. <laughs> so there was definitely no misunderstanding. <laughs> I was pretty sure I have a Nikon in my hand. <laughs> but uh, it is, it, a Nikon is, it's like, like a, when you take some big brands in the car world, they, over the last 30 years, they, they change the design and everything, but in the end, you sit inside and you still you know where you are. Like a Porsche has always the starter on the left side, the key, and things like that. And, and the Nikon has the way you hold your hand, the main buttons, uh, the, how the menu is working. There are camera brands where the, main, the, 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 the menu is really annoying you like hell. <laughs> and then you have the lens that you're so used to. So it is, no, the familiar feeling is absolutely to the point. It is the same like the set uh, seven, the menu, I think. It's very similar. So it's mm -hmm. also very helpful for me because uh, menus are for me like, like a secret garden where you get lost and you never get out again. <laughs> so thanks God, I understand this menu. So there must be something good on that. Yeah. Uh, I have seen other ones. Yeah, it's, it's all like, you know, all this thing, the, the architecture, where's everything, where my, when my hand goes up here for the autofocus, my display, uh, uh, yeah, the ISO, blind, blind, when I make a quick change of the mm -hmm. ISO, I'm at my button here, yeah, absolutely, I have to, yeah, it's where it has to be, yes. It all makes sense. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> if not, I would have given it back, it's like, give me an ISO. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. No, yeah. it's, it's, it's where it has to be. It mm -hmm. is like, just... Finally, the big brother uh, has entered the building. <laughs> now we have the one who's uh, like taking care of all the small ones. And yeah, it's like the, <laughs> the boss. <laughs> it is like the boss. Yeah, it's like that. We did have a question about autofocus performance um, and then in brackets to do with sports. Now, obviously, we mm -hmm. don't necessarily have any sports examples here, but we do have lots of motorsport examples. We do have a lot of um, So, Amy, if we take a look at this shot here. Yes. Um, I really like the, the idea of this shot because not only are we panning a moving subject, but you're also in a moving car whilst you're shooting this. Yes. So, um, just talk me through kind of some of the technique and the autofocusing modes that you were using. It so, I was using the, now, my apologies, you are the that's technical, <laughs> I, I, I call it the subject autofocus, yeah, the one where fine. you say, I'm I want you to focus on and in the, in the you know in the settings you choose whether it is automatic or if it's portrait or cars and I think you can also do it on like an animals. certain animals as you well. Can do animals, yeah. yeah. Um, so for me obviously I had it on on cars and I when you whenever you're shooting car to car tracking half of it is sometimes a, or at least up until the, genuinely up until the Z9 half of it was a guess because <laughs> if I wanted to if I wanted to shoot with my camera that close to the ground if I'm leaning out of a car my first thought is, am I safe or am I, you know, that's my, my initial thought. And then the next one is, okay, let me try and get the best image I can. If my camera is that close to the, to the ground, I'm not 
able to look through the viewfinder. That's something I, in the past I would have had to literally shoot blind and guess. Now I can use the screen to be able to see whichever way, portrait or landscape, but also the ability to just shoot many, many images for a start to be able to not have to worry about that. And also knowing that as long as I've got my, the, you know, the, the, the car relatively in the frame, I know that the focus is going to be, you know, the, the, the autofocus of the subject that I'm after. So whether that is if you're shooting sports or in my case, cars or animals, you know that that is going to be the thing that's in focus. It's not suddenly going to jump backwards to you know, build the building in the background or the, 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 the road in the foreground. For me, it's going to stay focused on the thing I'm going to try and focus on, which already makes my job easier because I don't have to shoot a thousand shots and then review them and then go, oh, I'm really sorry for the middle of 700. I missed <laughs> I missed the shot. Um, hopefully I'd pick it up before then. But it's nice to know that I've got, it's 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 a kind of camera that has your back and yeah. it's not like you, you end up working as a, as a team rather than you just simply using it. And I think that's the biggest difference, which I'm going to find when I start to use the, the Z9 for my own professional work. That's what I'm going to find the most enjoyable is that I feel like it's a teamwork, not necessarily me using a tool in my opinion, I think. So building on that, do you think that, that, you know, that how you were using the vehicle tracking and how you could choose which vehicle you wanted to focus on, mm -hmm. did that make this shot, which I think is one of your favorite shots, yes. <laughs> um, a little bit easier? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, I'm, I'm guessing the, the I'm going to call it AI. And the <laughs> I don't know if it's AI or not, but whatever technology is in, in the yeah. Z9, to be able to notice that it's you know, a vehicle or a, 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 an eye or whatever, knows that in this shot, I've got two headlights and that's my subject that I'm primarily focusing on. You know, I've got quite a high f-stop at this point, but it's not super high. So you hopefully for, from the depth of field will know that, they, that the rear car is my, my subject. Yeah. But I do love that it's, so it's, it's kept the focus on that, but it has also, you know, I've managed to be able to look enough in through the screen to be able to capture that, that highlight on the wheel just as the as, as the, uh, the two cars are going around this bend. And that, for me, I really, really loved. And, you know, it's sometimes a concern. You think, OK, am I, is, is my camera going to automatically focus? Or am I going to miss focus and capture just that rear wheel? Which, yes, would be a cool shot. But I know I've got, got in my head the kind of thing that I'm after. So, And also, you know, having the text in the foreground, I thought, well, yeah. maybe that seems to be more of a dominant feature. Will, will, the, will the autofocus accidentally, you know, jump onto that or, or the wheel itself. And so I think for 98% of the images that I shot, it stayed on the, on the, the, the rear yellow exactly car. Exactly where so you wanted it to. Exactly where I wanted yeah. it to. Um, question we had was, um, have any of you guys had chance to try it out with artificial lights? And I did see that this we had you. some <laughs> behind the scenes shots with Christian. So I'm just going to bring up some of the behind the scenes stuff. And Christian, I'm going to hand that over to you. Like, how have you been getting on? with artificial lights and some of this light setup. Just talk us through some of the LED panels or lights if there's, you know, if there's anything that you have. Did you have any issues shooting with lights and things like that or no? No, when I'm, I'm working with light, we are, we are working, I have a very simple lighting, always a very, I wouldn't call it complicated lighting, but we play with lighting. I like yeah. playing. Mm -hmm. and So we have where we play with colored gels and, and LEDs on, on different uh, color temperature. And so a lot of things going on. Uh, a lot of things that makes, can make the picture very beautiful and would show very quickly any kind of mistakes. Yes. I'm not even thinking about that because there was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it was just there. Uh, what for me was new in this camera when I, you know, when I'm working like that, I'm not working speedy at all. I mean, I make like clock, clock, and the whole Nikon Nikon team was like, come on, give me speed, you <laughs> can do speed. But what I need in those moments is, for example, the autofocus. The autofocus yes. is because I'm not really get used to this viewfinder, as I told you already before. And I, I love that the other focus, and especially at the Z9, finally, is really hanging on the eye. So, mm. And it is a point that when she's doing something like this and she has the hand maybe in front of the face. And, and then I just have to find a way that an eye is just looking between the mm -hmm. fingers and then the other focus is jumping on the eye. And that makes me life extremely easy that these things are working. Also, sometimes I can't look really through because of any reason of something holding, holding myself gel. I don't even think about does she catch it? Yes, you catch it. Uh, so that's that's working really good. And uh, what is for me the big gap, especially with this kind of camera, which now is represented by this set nine, and that makes me change my lighting. Now I really can work with LED lighting in my studio. Mm. I don't have to come with the big HMIs, which makes it very hot and complicated and heavy. And the, the, I knew. The, the, 
let's not talk about what it means having mm. a fashion show with Asian eye. You have like 10K minimum all over the place. It is super heavy to change something takes hours. And now we just have these LED lightings where it's coming like a third of the power maybe or something yeah. like that, 25% of the HMIs. But as I can shoot like completely normal, 1600 is nothing, 3200, well, let's do it. <laughs> Why not? Just to explain my assistants, measure on the shadow. That's the only thing. As long as you do that, no problem. <laughs> and suddenly I have a freeness. I can, and, and we haven't talked about that yet, but for us, filming is very important because yeah. we change completely photography. We're, when I do a job, it doesn't matter if it's editorial or commercial job, Everybody's expecting that we are filming and they want to see from us what I'm doing and still it must look and film the same after. Um, so my lighting is already a completely, uh, uh, yeah, this is, this is a light for both. I can use it for still and for film. Nvidia. And a camera can switch like that and a girl can do the same like she does in the still because of these possibilities to shoot high quality in a high ASA, even with low light, the other focus is still working perfectly. I can put the camera on a gimbal. I don't have to think at all about uh, focus pulling or something like that. I mean, normally we all know we have a beautiful camera on a nice gimbal. We have a person hanging here on the focus puller. We have like five people on the camera. No problem. We can do it. It looks amazing. Or we have one camera on a gimbal and we just have everything uh, well organized and then I'm alone. I just have my camera. I'm just moving. I make everything <laughs> with the gimbal, all like that. And the other focus, everything is working perfectly. And that is a liberty, which is like incredible. It's well, thank you very much for that answer. You're but a fan. That I'm is, a fan. That is, that is, every, I think everyone's a fan, right? <laughs> that is our last question. We are out of time, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for the questions. And hopefully we've answered as many of them as we can. Um, and we will see you all soon. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much.